The scientists all begin to walk into the warehouse, all talking amongst themselves, with some even whispering, all asking the same question, why they are being taken into the northern sector. They aren't supposed to be there, as it is a restricted section, only accessible to the surveying teams. The researchers and scientists are all then funneled into the center to meet their new masters, the Daleks. When they continue to talk near a patrolling Dalek, it would then say, The specimens will remain silent. Specimens? Some would think to themselves only a day ago, they would use that word on another, the red marker, along with the newly created recombinant life form that had been feeding off of the dusty ventilation system, growing and spreading its corrupt mucus all over the station's vents. The Daleks would then order their agents to move the scientists one by one to be scanned for intelligence levels. If you cooperate, you will not be harmed. You will kneel. Prepare to be scanned. Above average human intelligence. Below Dalek expectations. You are not what is expected. The scientist, thinking that he is free to go, would ask the following question when the Dalek would extend out its feeler and crush the man's skull in its plunger-like grip, soaking up the brainwaves, learning about humanity and what they are doing on Aegis 7. His mind spoke of unity, all praising a rock for rebirth, for the next stage in their evolutionary spectrum. Humans worshipping resources, unity, rebirth, these are primitive constructs. There must be more information. I require more information on this marker. I obey. The next you there, you will enter next. Please, please, spare me. Average intelligence detected. This one is useless. The Dalek continues rinsing through the remaining people, only imprisoning five out of the large group of specialists. Human resources are depleted. No matter, we have a foundation for a new Dalek breed. These numbers are more than necessary to defeat humanity. Those who will not be exterminated will be used as slaves for the Dalek Empire. We must tend to those within that room now. Make the preparations to begin transmission from human to Dalek. Obey! I obey. Within the southern corridor, Iando would be checking up on the rest of the scientists on his rounds. Looking through the corridor windows, he would find mostly empty rooms where he would expect to see several scientists and researchers conducting their individual experiments, frantically looking all around for the missing scientists. This can't be happening. They can't all just be having a tea break, Iando would panically think to himself as he begins to run through the hallways. Seriously, where, where is everyone? 
That's it. I need to find the manager of this station. Could this be related to his issue? He would ask himself as he begins heading to the eastern sector. Meanwhile, Clifton was heading down into the western sector to find a technician to look at the chip that was inside the surveyor's brain when he would come up to the maintenance bay and head inside. Inside the maintenance bay, workers would be repairing shuttles that had broken down and completing smaller repair jobs. Clifton would walk towards one of the offices to see a man working on a few things when he would see him standing in the middle of the doorway. Clifton, how are you doing my old friend? The technician would ask Clifton, with Clifton replying, I'm doing alright. Work's been fine, but that's kind of what brings me down here today. Not exactly coming down to see how I've been keeping, the man would continue to say. <laughs> Sorry man, I've been wrapped up in everything, Clifton would remark with the man saying, Well, how can I help you? Clifton would pull the metallic chip he found out of his white jacket with a few patches of blood still coating parts of it. Can you tell me what this would be used for? Clifton would ask as he placed it in front of him on his desk. The technician would pick up the chip and pull his magnifying lens in front of his face as he would examine the device. Hmm, it's hard to say. It looks similar to an obedience chip, but this one is far larger. You see, they would have used these on the most aggressive prisoners to make them more docile. Where did you find this? He would ask and explain. That chip was inside of a man's head, Clifton would say with the technician acting surprised, further asking. How did you say you came about this chip again, if it was inside the guy's head? Clifton would explain the incident to the technician, telling him all of the events that had led up to the confrontation between Hogan and the mysterious man, along with the pattern of creepy behavior. Well, from what I can see here, there have been a few modifications added to it. It has been designed to suppress all human-like qualities, which would leave the person as a hollow shell, only able to follow commands. Well, let's, let's scan it anyway. The technician would say, Clifton would ask, what are we scanning for? Well, if my theory is correct, perhaps we can see the last orders given to them from whoever commanded them in the first place. The technician would say as he placed the chip under the scanner, a ray of blue and teal light would then coat the device. Ha! There we go. The technician would say in an eager manner. The last known order was to assist the scientists in whatever they would need, it would seem. Clifton would say in response to the technician, Look there! Another one! It's just been issued out! What's that say? Return to the... Daleks. The technician would look at Clifton, confused at what he said, and what is appearing on the screen. He would ask, What's a... Dalek? Inside the office department of the station, Iando would walk into the station manager's office to find someone he would not have thought would be here. Hogan? Iando would say in surprise. Ah, Iando, I was just about to notify you about this, the manager would say. What is this? Iando would ask, with the colony manager responding, Well, Hogan here was caught visiting the morgue, only he wasn't alone. Hogan, I thought I told you about this, Iando would say, scolding Hogan. You knew about this? 
This doesn't bode well for you, Iando, the colony manager would ask in surprise. I did. They asked me about using a body for their experiments, Iando would say, frustrated at the news. What the blazes are you on about, Iando? I say this man killed one of the surveyors, the manager would say, confused at Iando's answer. Killed? You killed someone? You couldn't have access to the morgue, so you killed someone? Iando would say, shocked at the lengths Hogan was willing to go. It wasn't like that, Hogan would say. He would continue to explain his side to the story. The pair standing behind and in front would look confused at these grim turn of events. I will say that that man did look a little bit off, but we need to find Clifton so he can back up your story with his own recollection. Iando would suggest, with the manager saying, Okay, I will trust this because it is you, Iando. However, I am leaving you here, Hogan, under lock and guard until we can get to the bottom of this. I'm sure you understand. The two would walk out of the room, locking the door behind them, with the manager ordering two guards to stand there and guard the door. No one is to enter or leave until his return. Iando and the manager would have a conversation as they walked through the corridors, looking out for Clifton. So, uh, what were you coming to talk to me about? I doubt you decided to walk to my office because someone told you about Hogan. Iando responds, I'm afraid not. I haven't been able to spot any other scientists or researchers in the station, and I was hoping that you may know something about it. The manager would again look to him, but this time with a frown, shocked to hear of the absence. No, I, uh, I haven't heard or seen anything. All I know of is the missing resources and a few machines are gone now too. Iando, perplexed at these sudden events, would say, Let's move down here. The security cameras may give us more of an insight than just prancing around the corridors. Going around the corner of the hallway and through a few more corridors, the pair would come up to the security room where they would open the door to find everything in working order. However, the guards were not present at all. Guards? Guards! The manager would shout, hoping that they were nearby. Hmm, there's signs of a struggle taking place here. Perhaps Hogan's story was not so far-fetched after all, Iando would say after crouching down to see papers and files thrown all over the floors. Hmm, maybe. Well, let's find Clifton so that we can get the hell out of here, the manager would say as he looks through the security feeds, switching from camera to camera, and after some time looking through the several sectors of the station, they would spot him. See, there he is. But where is he going? Iando would ask. The northern sector. But that's off limits to your men, the manager would state. They would see him acting shifty, moving as if he was sneaking inside for some reason. Let's get a better view. What, what the? As the manager spoke, he switched to the cameras inside the warehouse. The feed would not show. The two would agree to get back to the offices to collect the guards and Hogan. From there, they will investigate what is happening inside of the warehouse. Clifton, as he snuck towards the doors of the warehouse, would open the main doors. Walking on through, he would be able to see the surveyor teams, all sleeping. However, they were in weird positions for sleeping. Unknown to him, he was actually walking past a graveyard. He would continue trying not to make a noise, climbing the stairs, to the upper level catwalks when he would get a glimpse of a Dalek putting a strange looking creature into more shells like the one he was seeing. However, these ones looked to be different, more bronze and iron clad than the silver Dalek 
doing whatever it was with men attaching the appendages to the shells as they were sealed shut. An electric charge to the casing was to be issued next, and the eye stalk of the casing would slowly rise, with a man checking the completion as the Dalek moved into another area of the warehouse, still visible to Clifton. Over the next moments, he would continue to watch as the Daleks were reproducing themselves. However, what he did not know was that these new Daleks were comprised of human tissues, not pure Dalek forms. He would start to feel sick to his stomach when he heard the machine below him speak out loud. All humans have been processed, awaiting further orders. All humans processed, Clifton would think to himself. Suddenly, his scientific mind would start to put two and two together to create probably the most disturbing finding that this Dalek was using human's flesh to create new life, ones of its own design. The Daleks in the other section would all start chanting as Clifton was holding his hands over his mouth to shield the noise of his heavy and nervous breathing. Clifton had seen enough. He needed to get out of the warehouse and back to Hogan so he could find Iando or the station manager or someone to warn. He would quietly and slowly move down the staircase, moving towards the way he came back in when another Dalek would spot him, cornering him at the base of the staircase. Who are you? Who are you? You will answer! Clifton would run past the Dalek and around the corner as the Dalek swung around attempting to kill or to paralyze with its gun. The Dalek would then give chase with Clifton desperately trying to make it back to the main door. Halt! At once! Halt! Or you will be exterminated! Obey! Obey the Daleks! Stay where you are! Do not move! Clifton would successfully make it past the bodies, but something was wrong. As he attempted to open the door with the Dalek in hot pursuit. What? <laughs> Why, why won't the door open? Clifton would ask himself. With the Dalek coming up from behind him, Clifton would turn his head to see the eye stalk, with his face becoming illuminated by the light ever shifting as it focused on him. However, a new thought suddenly crossed his mind. Why weren't the people getting up? When it would soon dawn on him, that these Daleks had killed them all. Be still! Scanning for intelligence levels! Intelligence level more than efficient! You will be useful to the future of the Daleks! Clifton would then see two more men coming to him from behind the light of the Dalek eye stalk, blocking out the background. He would try not to think about the alternative to death, as he already had a pretty clear idea of what that was to be, to become as they were.
Coming up to the main office block, the manager and Yando would soon see blood on the floor. Oh, this can't be good. Yando would state shocked by what he sees, while the manager just looks towards him before opening the door. Following the blood, Yando's rig link would suddenly go off, prompting him to remain inside the corridor. As the manager walked on inside, signaling to him that it's fine, he will continue, answer the call. Pressing the button on his wrist would show up a video hologram call from a small group of scientists who were present with the marker, asking for some assistance with their work. Stunned to see some people at last, he would agree, but there would be something he would need to do first. Walking inside the offices, the manager would follow the blood all the way to his office, with bits and pieces of flesh and hair coating the floor as well. He would hold his hand up to the door panel, and it would slide open, giving him access where he would see a large body laying on the floor. He would immediately think that this person was hurt, looking for help. He would call Iando to give him a hand. Iando would run to him, but as he did, he then heard a struggle coming from the manager's office. Then he would hear screams of pure terror. Passing the corner, he would then see another blood puddle, but this one was moving towards him, as if it was fresh. Only hearing the painful silence in the area, apart from some gurgling and choking noises, Iando would poke his head around the doorframe to see something, repeatedly stabbing the manager, ripping him apart. Iando would quickly dart away, running as quietly as possible, but also as fast as possible. However, in his hurry to escape, he then fell over, knocking over some office equipment, which would then alert the necromorph to his presence. Hearing a gurgled roar, he would pick himself back up, moving towards the door, seeing the figure over his shoulder coming towards him, walking as if, knowing Iando was defenseless. Iando would try to close the door from the corridor side and put the officers on a perimeter lockdown, all the while the creature was getting closer and closer to him, until it was visible to him, seeing the elongated body with arms for blades, seeing a mixture of bone, muscle and skin all wrapped together, as if redesigned for a new purpose. Iando would frantically work on the door with his hands shaking until the door slammed shut with an alarm blaring from within. Iando would slide down against the door, holding his head in his hands, when the corridors would start to get darker as he would get another vision blaring into his mind. The apparition was back, reminding him of the marker's ability, an ability that could save them from this new threat. The Dormancy Field Kill the humans! Unknown humanoid hostiles are attacking! Exterminate all life that is not Dalek! 